Hey there, and welcome to September 2019. My name is Kaylee Jean, and I'm here to do your creativity readings for the month. I just have a couple of quick announcements. First of all, if you are looking to go deeper with your astrological knowledge and you want to explore the potential of working with astrological magic in your personal spiritual practice, I will put the information to Natural Magic School. That's the topic of the month. We're going a lot deeper with it. We're also going to be doing some live streams and just exploring natural magic from an astrological perspective, as well as going into the philosophy of circle casting and working with the four directions. If you're not familiar with Natural Magic School, it is really just a very inexpensive way to support my channel. If you get something useful out of these videos and you want to say thank you, you get access to a ton of extra content every month. So all that information, again, will be below the video. Secondly, I wanted to let you know about the tanks that I'm wearing this month. I'm super excited to be partnered with Hannah Stone, who reached out to me. I was so excited to partner with her for this month's videos. She creates this whole line of astrological, constellation-based, and crystal-based designs with her clothes and her fabric that she uses is so freaking comfortable. Everything that she has, I think, is somewhat reversible. So you can wear it in different ways to create different necklines and just fun stuff. So I wanted to give her a little shout out and let you know that she's offering free shipping for anybody who watches this and wants to purchase something from her shop, which is super generous. So I will put all of her information below. I just really related to her mission She's working to empower women. She employs adults who earn fair wages in Canada. I absolutely love her mission. I feel like she is just a really awesome creative person and I'm really excited to be wearing her stuff this month. So if you're interested in that, I will put the information and the free shipping link to her shop below. Okay guys, let's get into your readings without any further ado. let's get into your September reading. As I was tuning into your energy, I was picking up this vibe, almost like you are sort of in the position this month to really quell or sort of disperse an illusion that has been maybe prevalent for you in your past. There's a sense of almost being kind of like a clear-headed um, warrior in certain ways in September. So I don't know where this is coming from. It could be that maybe, for example, we do have this Neptunian moon coming up in September on the 13th. It's a full moon in Pisces conjunct Neptune. And sometimes that can bring in the energy or it can draw attention and focus to areas of life where maybe deception has been a factor or maybe where someone hasn't been completely honest or completely forthcoming about the real situation that you know a group of people is involved in for example it could be for some of you related to finances because this is happening in your second house um, however I do feel that there's some kind of influence coming through for Aquarians where you really have this opportunity to kind of stand up and speak the truth or find the truth, discover the truth, and then make the truth kind of the, um, make it like exalted <laughs> in the situation basically. So um, I feel like there's a sense of empowerment coming from this, especially if you're an Aquarius who has been maybe dealing with a situation that has had a little bit of foggy integrity. For example, at work, if you know that something at work is, if you work in a corporation, for example, and you know that, that the higher ups in the company are doing something a little unsavory, or if there's a, kind of something unfair even in the work environment that you haven't really had the power to 
bring to a responsible authority because there hasn't been anybody sort of on your side or there hasn't been anybody who's going to kind of stand up and clear the air, that situation could come to a head in September where you actually get an opportunity. Maybe there's a shift in personnel or maybe there's someone new entering the situation who is a lot more trustworthy to you. So you can bring uh, the facts, <laughs> for example, to the light in front of a, a jury that's going to be a lot more integral or an audience or an individual who's going to be a lot more integral about it and actually hear kind of like the other side of the situation. So there could be that. There could also be if, if some of you have dealt with a lawsuit or anything like that recently, um, it could be that the truth comes out in the lawsuit, which would be, you know, obviously the way that I'm feeling this is that it's actually in your favor, Aquarius. So if you are an Aquarius, if you're one of the few out there who maybe has that specific situation, you have every reason to um, be firm and clear in your assertion of the truth and in your side of the story, because I do feel that that is going to be acknowledged maybe in ways that it hasn't in the past. So that's really nice. Um, I do feel that this is a good time for the truth seekers out there, especially if you're an Aquarius. I feel like there's going to be an opportunity for you to really stand up for um, what's right, essentially. And um, I also am feeling that it for some of you, there's a sense that you've been kind of in more of a spiraling evolutionary process. So you may recently have been feeling some ups and downs in regards to your energy or in regards to your optimism in life. So if you have been struggling with that, or if periodically you find yourself kind of feeling pretty low or pessimistic and then something happens and you have a little bit of a better day, but then it goes back down again, just keep, um, keep the faith, Aquarius. Be reasonable and kind and discerning with yourself and don't overly criticize your health or yourself or be overly harsh because everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, nobody's perfect. And um, I feel like this is a time for you to just take a reasonable approach with your own definitions of yourself and don't be too hard on yourself for whatever mistakes you may have made in the past. Um, right now is a time to just kind of be a little swordsy in a way, a little bit more um, true to your the airiness of your archetype, which is you're a thinker, and so you don't need to uh, have kind of like distorted thinking that will make it more difficult for you or make it harder on yourself psychologically. So let's take a look at your cards, and we will get some more information. Aquarius, Aquarius. So I was just seeing um, a Christmas tree just now. <laughs> so I don't know why that is, Aquarius. It could be that there's something about the upcoming holiday season that maybe you're planning, or it could be that um, the time, the period around Yule is going to be a significant time period uh, of culmination given the themes that we just discussed from the meditation. Aquarius, Aquarius. Okay. So we've got oyster as your path and B as what's crossing you. <laughs> um, it, the first thing that stands out to me is actually that both of these creatures are sort of small. Um, there's a sense of purposefulness with both of these creatures. And if you have this deck, Aquarius, or if you're familiar with it, you know that the oyster card actually comes up to represent times when we maybe are kind of holding something too tightly within us, like when we're a little tight-lipped, for example, and we're not sharing the pearls of wisdom that we contain within us. And this could be as a result of like fear of uh, criticism or fear of retribution, um, fear that, for example, because we had so many themes about like the truth and the truth needing to come out and really wanting to be a force for that in the situation where there may have been some murky or foggy energy, 
um, the oyster card is kind of showing that it could be that you have some sort of knowledge about a situation or about maybe the solution to a problem or that there's something that you have potentially to give that will be of value either within your immediate situation like the people immediately around you or even maybe on a global or societal level. Maybe you've been thinking about starting a channel or a blog or a podcast talking about a certain a certain discrepancy in society like maybe you want to bring some kind of awareness to an issue that you believe that you have some sort of solution for or that you have something that might be helpful <laughs> for people whether it has to do with health and wellness or maybe the planet and the environment or maybe um, the kind of corrupted things about society. There's a lot of energy I'm noticing that's coming through in this reading that has to do with kind of seeking out and bringing attention to something that needs to be fixed or that needs to be addressed, that needs to have a different solution for it. So I just feel this so strongly for you, Aquarius. This is a powerful time, but for some reason you're kind of holding back. And the message that I want to say is with the bee as the influence, um, the bee is kind of a humble creature. It's a creature that works very much within a broader system. It doesn't, I feel like if you could actually talk to an individual bee, it probably wouldn't really see itself as an individual. It would see itself as part of a collective. And there's a lot of really fascinating and interesting things about bees. For example, the way that the pattern in which they fly seems to be a very complex form of communication and with the other bees around them. So there's a lot of complexity and wisdom, but there's also this profound humility to the archetype or like the archetypal image or the symbol of a bee. It's kind of like a, a humble worker bee, you know? So I think maybe this can kind of help you psychologically if you're an Aquarius who is kind of if you're feeling this, if you're feeling what I'm saying and, and this is actually making sense to you on some level, one of the things that could get you out of any like fear of speaking up about something, whether it's again within your own work environment or your family environment, or if it's speaking out about something in more of a societal way, for example, on the internet or in a forum or like a community, larger community, whatever it is that you're kind of holding back, you could actually find a lot more peace in terms of actually coming out with that if you assume the role of the bee. And what I mean by that is see yourself as an integral but humble part of a collective. See yourself as someone who's just coming here to offer whatever you can that will be helpful in service to mankind, in service to your community, in service to your work environment, or in service to your family, wherever this message is hitting true for you. It's about recognizing that you do on some level have a responsibility to speak up if that's what you feel called to do. If your inner being is telling you that you can potentially solve a problem or help someone with something or if you can improve a situation um, that you are well aware of in your life and it wouldn't be all that difficult for you to do that. The only issue is that it would be putting yourself or your ego on the line. Well, you should probably go for it anyway, Aquarius. You should probably go for it anyway because you are gonna feel so much better having done or said the helpful things that you know you can. As long as you are showing up and doing everything that you can to help a situation or to help yourself or another person, that's it. It doesn't demand success or it doesn't deny failure. Like, don't be results-oriented here. Be process-oriented, Aquarius. And I feel like you're going to get a lot of fulfillment out of that. So um, let's take a look at your tarot cards to get some more information. So we have Page of Pentacles and Justice. See, guys, I mean, this is just spooky. <laughs> This is so spooky. I love this. So we've got the hanged man, the star, oh my gosh, the lovers, the queen of wands, the eight of wands, and the ace of wands. Damn. 
Okay, so we're seeing a clear pattern here right away. The humble worker bee energy that we saw with your bee card is very, very strongly echoed with the Page of Pentacles. Like if I had to come up with a card that would um, be the most closely associated with the bee, and I think actually Varush Tarot, I don't know if you guys know Varush Tarot, but I think she's just lovely. We actually had a conversation before on Instagram about the B card. And I'm pretty sure I, I even said in the conversation, if she's watching, maybe she can clarify. But I'm pretty sure we suggested that the Page of Pentacles would actually be a really good card to represent this B energy. <laughs> so um, shout out if to Varush if she's around. But... Uh, I absolutely think this is so adorable that these came up together because I have actually really strongly correlated these cards in the past just from my knowledge of the of them and how I work with them. But the Page of Pentacles, it does, it shows us this earnestness. It's like, yes, you may not be feeling like a king or a knight. You may not be feeling like you have all of this authority, you might not be approaching it with arrogance. Um, that's the Page of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is like acknowledging um, where you're at and leaving space for the alternative viewpoints of others, but at the same time, being courageous enough to offer up that which you can give, Aquarius, that which you can offer, that which you can authentically contribute, and that is enough. You don't need to dress it up, or um, you don't need to criticize it, you don't need to change it or modify it. Like, this is enough. That's what the Page of Pentacles is saying. What you have to offer is perfect in itself because it's true to who you are. So whatever it is that you are feeling called to speak out on, whatever it is that you're feeling um, inspired to help with, it's like this is a very much service-oriented energy for you, Aquarius. So I, I feel like this is a really good time for you to embrace that kind of humble um, energy of service in whatever way that is naturally taking shape for you. And I feel like that actually makes you feel um, very purposeful in your life. So a lot of Aquarians or people that have strong Aquarian placements do tend to have this need at some point, you know, it's going to come up in your life where you you do feel a strong pull to contribute and you, you recognize is more than any other sign that there's only so much emotion that you can actually have without bringing other people's well-being and other people's um, or other you know creatures animals wildlife the environment without bringing something else along with it like you're not a selfish sign you're not only about yourself so we see that coming up with justice, which again, really speaks to what I was um, talking about before from the meditation about needing to maybe you're feeling on some level like you do need to bring some sort of truth into um, an objective forum, into an objective light. The justice card is about objectivity. It's about fairness. It can be about the judicial branch of the government and, uh, you know, judges, courts, court cases, anything like that on a mundane level can be indicated by the justice card. But here is specifically next to the page of pentacles. It's like clearly saying you have something to offer in this justice realm. Whatever it is, it, it, whatever that you're trying to offer to the world, it has some facet to it that is at least attempting to balance the scales. It's attempting to bring order in the cosmos or in a sort of karmic or energetic way. Whatever you feel inspired to do right now, just know that on some level, Aquarius, even if it's just starting your own home decorating website or something like that, you're still trying to counterbalance something that is unintentional in society or that you, you're trying to solve a problem, something that's out of balance, you're trying to offer a solution for it. So whatever it is you know that's kind of like the meaning behind what's going on and that's sort of the challenge and the lesson for you at this time is it's it's about showing up being humble being present and purposeful and um, exalting wisdom exalting the truth 
<laughs> the star card with um, the hanged man. So these are coming up. Again, you have so many major arcana cards here. This is around the middle of the month of September. So this could be, um, this could be something that requires you to kind of have faith and wait. Because when I see these cards coming up together, it's like you've just hit your ball. <laughs> like if you're playing tennis or something with the universe, you've like hit the ball um, and it's out of your court now. And the ball is now in like the universe's court. <laughs> That's kind of the energy that we get. So maybe this purposeful kind of service or this purposeful contribution that you're working on in the beginning of the month once that's done, you can rest easy, Aquarius, because once you've said your piece, once you've put yourself out there, once you've contributed in that way, then the ball's not in your court anymore. Then it's time to go within. It's time to gather your strength, reflect on what you've been working on and what you care about at this time, and let the universe do its work. So we're definitely seeing that pretty strongly with um, those cards because the hangman is a card of waiting and the star is about having faith. So we definitely see that. And then you go into the lovers with these wands cards for the rest of the month. So you definitely have a lot of fire um, during the second portion of September. And um, this is probably going to be a really creative time for many of you. Sometimes for me, I see the lovers as specifically like a card that in a very mundane and earthy way does point to the, the process of manifesting something in the physical because there is this theme of sexuality indicated just by the polarity on the lovers card. So um, there's something here about creation and with the Queen of Wands, whether you're a male or female Aquarius, it doesn't matter. This is a time where your confidence is higher. This is a time where you're going to feel more ignited spiritually and creatively. And you're probably going to get, particularly around the third week of September, you're going to get either some news or you're going to get some kind of... Um, I want to say like a jump start, but the other phrase that's coming to mind is like a kick in the pants. But <laughs> like, though that might sound kind of ridiculous, I don't mean it in any sort of like negative way because these are happy cards. But it's almost like a like, holy shit, I need to get this done. Like I'm like I have this idea and now I'm on fire and it's like kicking me. Like it's it's kicking me forward. So um, it could come through another person because we have the personality card with the Queen of Wands it could be you know, on a very mundane level, a fire sign person, possibly female, who is a little bit older or who has some kind of regalness or self-actualization um, to her, as all of the queens do. It could also just be that this these energies are reflective of you, Aquarius, and the way that you're interacting with your environment is just very fiery. So I am getting the sense that there's quite a lot of creative energy coming in for you and by the time we get to September like the end of September and the Sun is in Libra there's something about this time period that is just going to be so so energizing for you you're probably going to see some quick resolution to some problems or to some questions that you had going on in the back of your mind you're getting those answers whether it's intuitively because I personally do associate the wand suit with the intuition and the intuitive faculty of the psyche it could be that you're getting a very clear like response from your inner being of, no, this is the direction we're going. This is what I need to do. And it could lead you to a new beginning with the Ace of Wands because we have the Eight Wands kind of aiming straight for the Ace. So the Ace of Wands is about um, a change, basically. It's a new beginning. It's um, a very fertile energy. Um, with the Ace of Wands, there's also that sense of new life and the leaves are springing out of it and it just has this kind of powerful urge toward vitality. And I really feel that you're going to be feeling that. You're going to be feeling that you are kind of pulled in some way. Like I said before, with the Queen of Wands and the Lovers, it's like something, some idea or some concept is really kind of nudging you forward and you're feeling more and more confident about your ability to kind of pursue that energy. 
So um, it looks really good for productivity. I would say if you were gonna do anything like starting a new business or launching something after the sun moves into Libra, according just to these cards at least, it looks very, very good. That is a sign that trines you as a fellow air sign. So you're going to have a good dose of kind of solar <laughs> trine energy coming at you in, during Libra season. So that could account for some of what we're seeing, but Overall, I feel like that is going to be a very powerful time for you, and it's going to be a great time to initiate um, projects or just kind of get things rolling. I think you're going to be feeling quite empowered by that. So let's take a look at your Lenormand cards. This is Pixie's Astounding Lenormand. It's, I'm not reading these cards traditionally. If you're familiar with the Lenormand system, you will know that this is not a traditional way of reading the cards, but I just felt like using them to sort of jog my intuition um, for these readings this month and try something a little different. Okay, so we're gonna get you a Bob Ross card. And we're going to get you a uh, Soul Trees. Ooh, no, you know what? I was just, they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's on the top. <laughs> okay, so we have, wow, Resistance. And it says, Painting will bring a lot of good thoughts to your heart. So, um, that's the way out of the Resistance, I think, is really getting yourself in a creative flow. I feel like these cards really do go together. It's like whenever this month you feel that resistance, and we already know that you are feeling it because you have Oyster, which is like the energy of clamping shut. Um, whenever you feel that resistance to sharing or you feel that resistance to kind of um, coming out with whatever it is that you feel like you need to come out with, Aquarius, the resistance card is kind of saying like, you're going to feel that initial flare up of either fear or hesitation or resistance. But the only way to get around that is just to paint like mad anyway, you know, um, create anyway, feel the resistance, but don't let it stop you. And that's how you achieve <laughs> as a creative person. At least that's what I've found. You know, it's not always inspiring. It's not always easy to even get in front of the camera here with you guys and do this. Sometimes all I want to do is kind of hide away and <laughs> not be on camera. But I think that it's important, you know, to talk about this. If we're talking about creativity and we're talking about um how to motivate yourself to actually achieve, you know, fulfillment through finishing creative projects. Like it's not always going to be the most inspired moment. Sometimes you do have to just kind of get your, um, get yourself in front of your work and just do it. And if you're lucky on those very resistant days, you get in front of it and you may still feel a lot of resistance, but then as you go through it, you get into that flow and you get into the the rhythm of it and you start to inspire yourself but you start with um muscling through you know sometimes you you do <laughs> sometimes you start by doing it even when you don't want to and then you get into a gradually better place with it so we have fox the tree the whip the clouds and the moon in your relationship reading so that'll be interesting we've got mountain birds tower the dog the bear the house the coffin the bouquet the sky the child the letter and the writer so um i will be looking at these lenormand cards in your extended reading but aquarius the main messages that came through are your main messages with your tarot cards so i hope that this reading gave you something beneficial and healing and helpful as you go through the month of September. I'm sending you guys so much love and support. I hope you have an amazing month and I will talk to you next time. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. All those things really help my channel and they really help me to know that these readings are helpful to you. So please go ahead and leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up if you're still watching and you found this reading helpful. I'm sending you so much love and I will talk to you next time. Bye Aquarius.